Welcome to the Fair Housing Insiders. We are so thankful that you joined us. Uh, and please remember to subscribe here on our YouTube channel or follow and like us on your favorite social media outlet, which you can find links to in our show notes for even more fair housing news and insights. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fair Housing Insiders, episode 81. Today, we are focusing on payments and communication. Joining me today is Michael Coughlin, and I'm your host, Jonathan Saar. So let's take a look at a scenario, Michael, and we'll get your, your comments and feedback on this topic. I'm sorry, Mr. Fitch, but we don't have a record of a maintenance request for your dishwasher. I have emailed every week for two months now, and nothing has come of it. I don't mind washing my dishes by hand, but I have a dishwasher and would like to be able to use it. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. However, we have a strict policy that all maintenance requests be made in person, in the office, or by written communication sent by mail. We don't accept phone calls, emails, or text message maintenance requests. So, if you'd like to come into the office, we'll be happy to fill out that form for you. So, Michael, question for you. Is there a fair housing issue with restricting how a resident communicates? Uh, there certainly is, Jonathan. Um, I would say from a customer service standpoint, you certainly want to offer as many means of communication as possible, as long as it's not disrupting your uh, business operations. But from a fair housing standpoint, um, you do need to take into account uh, the possibility of a disability be involved, in which case the resident does, does have the right to request a reasonable accommodation to accommodate whatever style of communication uh, fits their disability. Okay, thank you. So should the, when you look at the, the scenario we just had, sh should that staff person have handled this conversation differently? Uh, certainly, yeah. Taylor was doing their best to uh, explain it as much as they could. Um, however, they certainly should have offered them the opportunity to um, to kind of divulge. She could have asked them, oh, like, do you need a different form of communication as a result of a disability? And that would allow them to open the door to request a reasonable accommodation instead of just kind of outright flat denying any variation on the forms of communication. Digible is a marketing and technology company specializing in the multifamily housing industry. We're a motley crew of industry professionals who all share a passion for a common purpose. To transform the apartment marketing industry through creative, data-driven, digital marketing and technology solutions and world-class client support. Contact us today at Digible.com. Okay, very good. Thank you. So what about uh, making payments? Can you dictate and restrict how a resident makes rent payments? Uh, again, we're kind of in the same scenario there. It seems like payments would be a little bit more straightforward. But uh, again, from a customer service standpoint, you know, the more vari variability you have, the more um, options you can offer your, uh, your tenants. And hopefully that will mean you receive payments more often on time. Um, however, you certainly have the right to only um, allow certain forms of payment. Uh, but again, you need to keep in, uh, into account if the uh, resident has a disability, they have the right to request that reasonable accommodation that would dictate what form of payment you need to receive. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate your insights, Michael. It's amazing how even in little things where the fair housing law applies, we appreciate you providing some feedback on this topic today. So thank you everyone for tuning in to our show. Until next time, take care, everyone. Happy training. Thank you for joining us. And we can't wait to hear your feedback about today's episode. Do you have a topic that you would like to see discussed in a future episode? Feel free to share that with us. In the show notes, you'll see a link to sign up for our newsletter. This newsletter will keep you up to date with our latest episodes, blogs, and information about our online fair housing courses. Thank you again and happy training.